off cycle elections in the country have become a part of us. Some people are even at some point, uh, they were calling for a possibility of really finding a way of ratifying elections such that all elections will hold uh, at the same time in the country under general elections be conducted by the Independent National Electoral Commission. But it is what it is. Uh, issues uh, occurred across some states of the Federation and they have to start to conduct the governorship elections uh, at different times, different from the general elections in the country, Kim. All right. The, the, the dual governorship elections is just a few days down the line, and questions have been asked about the conduct of politicians, security agencies, the electorate themselves, and of course all of the stakeholders, political parties, about how to ensure that these elections are free and fair and credible, and that the results are acceptable to all of the people who live and work in Edo State. No, absolutely. And so, uh, because Saturday is very important to Edo State and the people of Edo State, we told you that we'll be discussing it. I will also be bringing it to the fore another state that will be having its election in November this year. Let's start with Edo State, but before anything else, let's resound what uh, the uh, former Commonwealth Secretary General, Aime Kanyuku, had to say in the build up to these elections and the fact that he's been, caution, he's been cautioning politicians to be very wary of what they do, what they say, how they act, and the things uh, that their supporters do in the build up to off season elections in the country. All right, he wants everyone to be on the alert and ensure that they conduct themselves with utmost you know, dignity as the elections uh, come on this Saturday. And of course, they do the undo election much later in the year. He believes that the world is watching and that Nigerian stakeholders should conduct themselves and ensure that these elections are peaceful and credible. All right, at this time we have with you this morning, Shaye Clements, who joins us virtually from United Kingdom. I hope we use it very well. We talked about uh, this before, Shaye. We thank you for joining us on the program. Hello, Shayi, are you there? All right, uh, we're trying to reconnect with the improper as we really count down to our uh, Edo election on Saturday. Absolutely. Uh, again, one thing that's, that's bothering my mind is that uh, it looks like every time we have an election, either the general elections or the off season elections like Edo and Undo, you know, there's always this, um, this um, tension, you know, maybe subtle yeah. sometimes, you know, people. Elders are speaking, statesmen are speaking, everyone is speaking, please, please let us conduct ourselves. Why is it that, is it that there's so much at stake? And it, I mean, to me, it, it, it tells you that there's still a lot of desperation on the part of politicians mm. to grab power. And because ordinarily, I mean, for, 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 for an average citizen, what does it cost him? Walks into the polling unit, casts his ballot, and walks away. It's as simple as that, you know, based on whatever, you know, convictions that he has. Why the tension? Why the plea? Why the fear that it may be violent, it may be this or that? It's just because politicians are desperate. And that was one of the reasons why the National uh, Peace Commission would always ask for the signing of peace accord, which some would say is not binding. Maybe morally it could be binding, you just want to say, but under the law of the land, nothing, you can't be taken to court to have signed an accord and see you go ahead to break the laws. I mean, you can get punished for causing public, uh, you know, disturbance or anything, or for whatever offense you're found to be guilty of, but you can't be found, you know, guilty of signing an accord and not keeping to it. That is not under the Constitution of the Federal Republic Absolutely. of Nigeria. Uh, this again, oh, I think Shea Clement is here now. Mr. Shea Clement, thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. Sorry for the technical glitch. Thank you. Uh, let me take you on from where you know we just left. Why is it that each time there's an election coming up in Nigeria, either the off-season elections or the other elections that are all along together, why is it that there's so much fear that it could be violent, it could be, it could be, you know, there could be disturbances, there could be issues. Why? And everybody's speaking, everybody's pleading, everybody's admonishing. Why do we have that? Because. I'll say that as we do, the democratic institutions in Nigeria are still in the infancy. So it is almost a uh, free for all and the wild, wild west when it comes to elections in Nigeria. And also because a lot is invested, invested in the political system. So 
there is so much to be gained by having political power. If you, if you look at other countries, better developed countries, there are things you could do which is outside the political system. The third sector is very powerful in, 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 in Europe, for example. But in, the, in our case, everything revolves around having political power. So in every case, every politician who is looking at having access to power or better still, state capture. state capture, because that is the only way you feel that you can contribute to the to develop your community and develop the country. So there's a lot invested in it, and a lot of money goes into going to aspiring for officers. All right, Shay, uh, we've lost a lot of time on the show. Uh, to, meant to talk to you today, but I know that we can make the best of the next three minutes. What do you see in the build-up to the Edo election on Saturday, and what are your expectations of all stakeholders? To be fair, to, I, I don't, I don't ex in, when we talk about fair, free and fair elections, I wouldn't expect much, because we don't act much in terms of free and fair elections. If we want to be fair to ourselves, we've not had free and fair elections in Nigeria since 1999. So we don't expect anything different. We expect every stakeholder, every political player to see how they can manipulate the system to their favor, their favor. And that's what's going to happen. Uh, it's quite important to every stakeholder and they do not believe that the First, they do not believe security apparatus is fair or independent. They do not believe that the regulatory authority INEC, is fair, is free and independent. They do not believe the judiciary is impartial. So, in that case, you, have, you expect everybody to try and manipulate the system to suit themselves. Unfortunately. All right, uh, just before we go, you are a political affairs analyst, and I'd like to take advantage of your thinking uh, concerning the refusal of the PDP in Edo State to sign the peace accord. What do you think? I think it just brings home to most of us what we've always known that the peace accord, with all its good intentions, is as toothless. As they say, the road to hell, the, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. I recognize the good intentions of uh, Reverend Kuka. I recognize the good intention of General Abdullah, but the the institution itself is ineffective. And as such, people are now beginning to realize that, that they all the sign a peace accord, and the next thing they get burnt out because they know there are no repercussions for flattening the uh, peace accord. There are no repercussions for uh, flattening regulatory uh, electoral rules. And, and the PDP is just saying what we've all suspected. And we have to also remember that President um, did not sign a peace accord either. This really brings to bear that it didn't happen then, it's not happening now, it should not matter. Maybe that's how some people would say. Shay Clement, we thank you indeed for joining us on the program today. Never enough time to hear from I mean, your wealth of experience and the way you really bring your perspective to bear on national issues. So thank you indeed for joining us today, and we're looking forward to the next time with you on the show. All right. This is Watching News Hub. Kim... We are navigating through the international scene. Within Waters takes us around the world in just about uh, 25 minutes. A lot of things are happening in the United States right now. President Trump's got his life attempted on in the last two months, I mean, twice, twice. so to speak. And elections just uh, around the corner. I don't know what people are, are, are thinking at this point. Well, um, right now, I believe that uh, the, the stakes are indeed very high. Uh, and I'm happy that he quickly tweeted yesterday, you know, to say, look, I'm safe, regardless of um, whatever it is anyone may try to throw up 
Uh, it just tells you again that uh, sometimes, you know, we're talking about how politicians can be desperate. Uh, although this is quite, uh, I mean, we can't say exactly what's behind this, but it just tells you again that people can really go to the extreme. And that's why societies have to work. You know, institutions have to work. Uh, if you have institutions, you know, that, that, that works, they are able to check some of these things. Absolutely. And so you say, watch your news hub. We'll switch over to Around the World with Dave Waters. And we'll be right back to say our goodbyes to stay with us.